and welcome to Doing the Books, um, an event part of Open Books. My name is Fleur Sinclair and I'm the owner of the Seven Notes Bookshop. Today I'm delighted to be hosting a conversation with three very talented people from the book industry. Before we get started, let me tell you a bit about Open Books. Open Books will be bringing you an exciting selection of online events and short videos introducing you to careers in the book industry. It will show you how you could put your interests, passions and creative skills to work, whether it be art and design, business acumen or worldwide travel and languages. We'll also be delving, diving deeper into some of the jobs the book industry might you might already know about, such as working as an editor or in areas like marketing and publicity. This panel, Doing the Books, explores a hugely exciting part of the industry, the business of selling books. This could be anything from running a high street bookshop to e-commerce and book selling online to working for a publisher selling books to retailers. So what exactly do these roles entail? What sort of skills do you need? Let's talk to our panel and find out. So I'm very pleased to be joined by three people who know all about working in book selling. And I'm going to start by asking them each to introduce themselves. So going round in order of the, the, um, the squares. Um, Daphne, would you like to start? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Daphne Tong. I am the founder and owner of Illumicrate, which is a book subscription box and also recent uh, founder of Daphne Press, which is a um, small publisher. Thank you. Um, Mira. Hi, my name is Mira Kinshamdas. I am the co-director um, of Roundtable Books CIC in Brixton. Um, it is a community-based bookshop um and i am of um asian descent and zane hi uh, my name is zane mood i'm head of e-commerce at waterstones um i've been a bookseller for 15 years and then various roles but now manage the waterstones.com website thank you all so much um so i suppose um a nice place to start um i'm going to ask each of you did you always want to work in the book industry? And what was your career path to your current role? So if we start with Daphne again. I didn't actually get into the book industry until quite late on in life. I, um, I, I probably like quite a lot of people didn't realize that working in books uh, was an option. Um, I've always loved to read. And uh, for a time I was a um, a book blogger and that's how I actually started in the book industry so I used to uh, review books and um, doing so kind of you know um, got closer to the book industry you know met a lot of people that worked in publishing met a lot of authors um, you know kind of realized what a nice kind of industry it, it was and then it wasn't until I started um, Illumicrate which is my book subscription box, which I actually did on the side of um, working um, sort of a, norm, a nine to five job in another industry that um, that kind of gave me an in. Yeah. So no, very much uh, didn't start out with a goal to, to work in the book industry, but, you know, sort of has now ended up here. And I think um, it, it was, it's been great. Thank you. Um, Mira. Um, I came, also came to the book industry much later um, and it was very accidental. Um, I'd always loved reading um, and books. Um, when I was younger, my three passions happened to be um, books, um, the idea of being a chef and the idea of being an artist. And I've been lucky enough to do all three in my life. Um, I did fine art at university um and then went on to have to get my unfortunately even though I graduated from St Martin's I needed a job rather quickly because I had kids quite young um and needed um and then became a pastry chef for 14 years um due to like the physical toll on my body I decided that I was going to retrain and go back to university and ended up um becoming the manager of a social enterprise bookshop that is very similar to the one that I now co-direct. Um, that was what says to work alongside my uh, my job in, or my studying, and I just fell in love with it. So um, so here I am, like three and a half years later, <laughs> and co-director of a fantastic bookshop. Thank you, Mira. And Zane? Um, yeah. Uh 
it was never my intention, but it's something that I fell into. Um, I was a bookseller when I was a student um, uh, part time. And then this has kind of just become the role that I did. And, and I think it's been fantastic and really exciting for me because I think it it allows you to my, my, my main passion being reading books and talking to people about books. And it obviously allows that that to be fulfilled completely but also I think beyond that um has also allowed me to create what a good bookshop is and I think that's something that you really get to do as a bookseller within the book industry is really set things out and create things as appropriate to the type of customers that you've got and um, the other thing that I found because I've been doing this for a number of years now is that actually um there's a real opportunity for various different types of roles and various different types of areas of growth and learning um, so it's been very fulfilling. I think, I mean, you've also just spoken about your different journeys, but I think, I suppose it'd be interesting and any one of you jump jump in with the, the answer, you know, um, about the sort of expectations you had coming into the industry and what has surprised you about it. I think as a bookshop, there's the expectation that you're just selling books quite a lot of the time. Um, and I definitely know that, um, my like so many experiences that I you um, that I had previous to book selling were really useful because things like planning events, event management, um, generally like um, the logistics of how to think about in a more innovative way to um, to encourage people not only to your bookshop and shop but to to engage with your communities and your local communities in a um, and engage them to really grow the literary aspect within a community and work with other organizations um, that do that sort of thing, I think is completely underestimated. Like many people just think that we just sit and read and sell books. And I can't even remember the last time I got to read at work. <laughs> so um, obviously outside work a lot, but not, not in work as much as I'd like to <laughs> I think, or the expectation I think that would be there. Zane, is this would does this sort of mirror your experience yeah yeah I, 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 I was about to completely agree with Mira I, th I think there is um there's a conception clearly around um you know this uh, a potential idyllic version of what what a bookshop is and what being a bookseller is and there is a part of that and clearly is the enjoyment of you know having a new book in your hands and talking to customers and recommendation but it, at the same time it's it is it's a, it's a job where you get to apply various different skills that are beyond that whether that's you know you, the normal things of normal working life of of um of speaking to people of managing people of, of holding down various different sort of from from looking at spreadsheets to to you know answering emails etc so I, I don't think it i think there is a there is a preconception but it's much more than that I wanted to sort of mirror that. I think part of the um, expectation I had was, yes, it, it was, you know, reading a lot of books and getting to curate and select, you know, what books that I wanted to send out to my subscribers for Illumicrate. But so much of um, running it is also about the business side of things. So you, you kind of realize that while selling books, you're actually starting a, a your own business as well and you know it is it is a lot more than just sort of reading and and there is still a lot of reading and it's it's really fun um to be able to recommend and and curate books but yes it you know there's a lot of different jobs within um illumicrate for example you know um uh, some of my team work in operations, you know, how to actually get the books out to people, um, so a lot of the team work in social media, a lot, you know, and so there's a lot of other jobs within kind of the, the bookseller role um, that all kind of work together to create that business. And just, you know, given the title of, you know, this particular session, doing the books, I wonder if any of you would like to just elaborate a little bit more on some of that behind the scenes, slightly more spreadsheet side of like, you know, the 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 more mathematical, because, you know, I think there can be so many sort of stereotypes about if you like reading, you're sort of creative and you're not good at math, say, or, you know, the, these things that are just not necessarily true. 
at all and certainly you know within this particular industry so yeah I don't know if any of you would like to even just sort of list some of the things that you do during your day you know just to to begin that to open that perhaps there's a lot of behind the scenes beyond what you see in a bookshop or on a website with the purchasing of books so so obviously there's everything from purchasing the books into our warehouses which does involve looking at what titles they are and that, that's quite fun but also what how much you're going to buy of those titles and also understanding financially the impacts of that and also the sort of processes that are involved with ensuring that your stock holding is correct and, and rather boring things such as you know well, not boring at all actually but in terms of ensuring that you're how you return them how you keep it all sort of um you know within within right profitable margins then there there is the fulfillment so from an internet perspective um which is a lot to do with how do i actually get this book to the customer on time then there's a lot of legal stuff for, at the same time um you know you have to really be absolutely okay on your sort of data and your privacy and your help pages and then from a pure just in an e-commerce perspective there's lots of very very exciting stuff that actually isn't really book selling at all if i'm honest it, it's very much from a technical point of view or from a digital point of view whether that is building new websites or building new features and components for your website to work or um, or indeed getting into the sort of world of sort of data and using that data to inform your decisions in many different ways, which doesn't sound like book selling, but it, but it having a book selling sort of aspect or mindset to it does help you inform those decisions. Mira, I wonder, just because obviously your shop is so different as a very small shop in a community, I think the events and the, the, the relationships that you have, like with local libraries and other organisations, I think that's a whole different aspect to Again, I don't know if you'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, so building partnerships is, is definitely one of the strengths of um, what we've done over the last slide at the last year and longer. Um, it's, um, it's because we're a community interest company, working with the community is really critical. And so um, it's really important to get out there and like have conversations with people and see and invariably it's about kind of seeing ways that you can work and support each other and really grow things um also sometimes it's about um and like a deeper understanding of of like how genuinely how can we benefit each other how can we make these events so that they're accessible to all um and yet well attended and good for the author and good for the book industry generally so those um those take sort of a multi-layer multi approach um, to how the conversation, like the conversations that we have. You have to be open, to, really open to a conversation. You almost need to, when you have the initial conversations, like when I first went to Brixton Library, they had already had a very established events program. And so seeing how we would fit within that and what we could do and where they, what, the, what they needed from us, what we could do to also grow us in the same and it be a symbiotic growth was um, took a lot of like listening on both sides really and that has been, it's really, been a really amazing relationship growth um, for both for both of us and then other partnerships that we formed are things like um, we take books out to guys in St Thomas's and do book fairs um, because of a, um, a belief that sometimes you can't just stay in one space so I think that one of the things that I've learned is that it's probably a job that you have to learn to get, say yes a lot then also when to say no, um, sometimes on the back of that, but being very, very flexible and open to new ideas and having that, like having a lot, of, having get up and go. If you've got that, if, you know, somebody's got that real spirit of just like really being dynamic and wanting to get up and go, then it's just like th this side of the book industry and the sales element of the book industry is exactly, it's such a great place um, to be at. So. Thank you, Mira. So talking about get up and go, um, Daphne, I'd like you to talk a little bit about starting a business from scratch. It's it's terrifying, but also very fun. Um, you know, getting to be your own boss after uh, working for someone else for a really long time, I think was a real breath of fresh air for me. 
Um, it enabled me to have a more flexible work-life balance, which I never used to have at my previous role. It was nice that the work I was doing was um, for myself rather than for someone else. And I think um, it's definitely scary. It, it was definitely scary to take the leap from being a full-time employee to, um, you know, sort of starting my own business. It's, it's strange because you go from having, um, in, in, my, in my old day job, I used to do kind of a very, very tiny part of the business. Um, and when you start your own business, um, you have to do everything about the business. So you're, you're not just a, a bookseller, you're, you're the accountant, you're the IT <laughs> support, you are customer service, uh, you are, you know, the creative director, you are all, all of the things um, for your own business, you're, you're the social media manager, etc. Um, and it's been great, actually, um, getting to do all of those different roles. Um, and learning what they all entail. And now, thankfully, I do have um, a team of people that um, work all of those different roles within the business. Um, and so it, it's been really, I think, beneficial to, you know, um, learn every part of your business, um, but also know when to realize when you need help um, and that you can't do everything yourself. And there's uh, definitely, um, you know, people that can do parts of your job better than, better than you, <laughs> essentially. And, um, I think have it growing the team, growing, um, the, the jobs that we can offer people at Illumicrate has also been really rewarding. It's been so great to have a completely flexible work environment. Um, you know, a lot of my team, uh, work from home full time. They, live in different parts of the UK, um, you know, so they, they don't have to kind of move for the role, which I think has been um, a really important thing that we've been able to sort of hire um, people that, you know, would love to work in books that maybe wouldn't have had the opportunity to due to their location or their health um, in, in some different ways. Now, I think you know, given that Open Books is aimed at 14 to 19 year olds and, you know, we've spoken a little bit about things we've done, things we've done before, you know, before coming into the industry. I wonder, I suppose one sort of way to look at it is if you have any advice for any budding um, entrepreneurs and two, if you have any ideas of opportunities that you would see for for, for any budding entrepreneurs. So, um, Zane, do, do you want to, to start with this one? Uh, yeah, my, my advice would be pretty simple, actually. I think it's just to show the desire that you, you do want to continue learning. And I think that's a really, like, hard thing to... Um, always keep close to yourself but particularly if, you, if you're taking on any sort of new task particularly for this age group or if you're starting off in a new career is just to if there are opportunities that are thrown at you where you get a chance to learn something different or you're put into maybe just a slightly uncomfortable area where, where it's okay and, and I need to I don't know anything about this subject that's absolutely fine people are around you hopefully to support you and teach and train you and develop you in those areas but you, need, you do need to take or try to take that first step. It might seem like a risk, but um, it will help you in the long run. And at least that experience will, will back you up. Um, in terms of sort of areas, if you're, if you're thinking from an entrepreneurial sort of area, um, and I'm obviously talking from close to my own heart, um, is definitely there is a lot of opportunity, I think, in, in the marriage between the book industry and the technical area of, of e-commerce. Um, obviously, that's very much grown over the last few years post the pandemic. Um, and actually, there's quite a lot that um, can be learned still in that area about how you sell books online um, and how you sell books online to different types of customers and different types of demographics. And, and I think whether that's learning how apps work or learning how to build emails. That might not sound exactly like uh, book selling as it were, but it, it, it is and you can still apply it. So um, I'd look in those sort of areas and opportunities. I've worked, we, we do a lot of work with, as part of the community entertainment, we do a lot of work in schools. Um, and actually I often think when, I, when I've worked with young people, I've, 
not necessarily, it's not always been the traditional um, or the perceived in the group to be the bookworm that I would think that would make um, somebody who would be great at this job and, um, and or in this or in the sales side of the industry and talking about books. It is often the, um, the kids that have that like bit of a charisma tiny bit of a show off but uh, I actually think they really suit like those roles I think some of the characteristics that you don't always expect some of the best people um when we've looked in the book industry and people are talking to us about books when I get most excited um it isn't always like again like the perceived bookworm who can be a bit shy and things like that it's often the kids who have that this book is amazing for this reason and like and really like you know really getting you engaged in it and bite in it as well and um so and I think that I think it does especially in the sales side does you do need that little bit of confidence you often if you think um that you are quite good at public speaking that's also quite a useful um a useful role and like useful skill sets um and yeah there's just like and good with people I think being good with people is really really critical um especially as you also work in teams that involve a lot of sharing and talking I'm um, talking it's you know it's also good at like good at working in teams and groups I would probably say that uh, a common I think misconception is that the only job in the book industry is to sort of be an editor or something you know to or an author if that if if you know um and that's very much not the case there's a lot of different roles within the book industry that you can um you can do no matter what your skill set um is you know and I think it's really important that to know that you don't have to have a literature degree to to work in the book industry um you could study whatever you wanted and still show a passion for books and still find a role um, that you love in the book industry. So I, you know, I think it's really important to know that, it, you know, jobs in books isn't just about writing or editing, but there's a whole range of other things that you can do. I uh, um, started out as a book blogger, as, as I mentioned, um, this has uh, slowly evolved over time into um bookstagram and um book tube and now book talk um and I think um kind of demonstrating your love for books using those sort of social media platforms if you're so inclined to that um is 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 really helpful in you know kind of showing potentially future employers or uh, that that you love and you care about books and you or you want to shout about you know, what you've read and why you've loved it and recommend things to other people. So I say if you are so social media inclined, um, talking about books on on those platforms is a, is a great way to kind of get to know the community and, um, you know, give yourself a, a leg up, I guess, in, in, in the book industry. I mean, a few of you have touched on this already and and just the idea of education is quite a big one here because it seems like you know you don't have to have an English literature degree or you know um, in order to go on and study because it seems like everybody on this call has studied to a different levels and and different subjects and the the sort of you know the defining the defining thing that ties everybody together on this call is a love of books, which is something that we don't necessarily get to do during the day anyway. That's what we do for, for you know, our downtime, as it were, as well as it's sort of feeding into our job. So I think that's like an important thing to remember, um, uh, particularly in today's climate where not everybody, not everybody is maybe thinking that studying to degree level is going to be you know, the option for them, I think the the passion and the throwing yourself into life is going to be, you know, one of the the, the key things. So um, I, I suppose, you know, everybody has sort of been working for a, a, an amount of time. I think one thing that would be interesting to speak about is how you all feel that book selling has changed in recent years. You know, book selling has changed in that, um, the actual the physical uh book and how it's packaged in my opinion has has really kind of stepped up uh you know covers play such a an important role in how successful a book is um in my business um the value add that we do to books is to make them make them fancy so we make you know we we 
um, give them beautiful sprayed edges or we give them embossing or we have them signed by the author. And I think it's all of those sort of extra visual things, I think, that have really changed uh, book selling in a way because of the way that social media is so um, visual. Uh, you know, everyone, you know, wants to hold up a nice looking book and recommend it to people. Uh, and, you know, if something has a, a, a really striking cover, you know, something that's very um, recognizable, then, you know, it, it spreads very, very quickly. And to me, I feel like that that to me has been kind of a, a, a shift in, in book selling that it is, even though it might not uh, be have to be the the reason is uh, you know people do definitely judge books by their covers a, a lot more um it's, you know if people are shopping online you know they're they're just seeing a cover um and so it, I feel like there's a lot of importance in how a book it looks and how it's presented um a lot more than than maybe before social media I think Mira if um as the the, the bookseller with the bricks and mortar on the panel, I think there have been so many changes and predictions of change that maybe haven't come to pass. You know, I wonder if you could talk about how you've seen bookselling change since you came into the, the industry. I mean, there's um, it, it's been a really rapidly changing market. Um, so we um, for. I've worked in three bookshops since I um, since I came to bookselling, and two of them. One of them was an inclusive bookshop, and this the, um, the bookshop um, my round table, um, the one that I'm a co-director of presently, is um, is only sells diverse books. We have seen like a real rise in the quality of diverse writing, um, and um, and that goes from across the spectrum from children's to adults. And there's been a fantastic report. Um, about children's um, titles specifically um, that has been set like from 2018 and they do one every year and that of that really is a marker of of the level of diversity and in, um, in how much how many diverse titles are being published and when we talk about diversity um, the original report um, like does mainly focus on race and ethnicity. Um, we at the bookshop do focus on, um, so there's actually seven protected characteristics in UK law in terms of anti-discrimination law, and we focus on three of them, which is race and ethnicity, LGBTQIA+, and disability and neurodivergence. The other groups, they like, they are getting better as well. And that's really significant to us in terms of what we do. Also, there have been some positives and some negatives in, in lots of conversations. Like one of the major conversations that's happening in books at the moment is the price point of books. Um, and that, um, because books are slowly creeping up in price. And some bookshops aren't really feeling that like the customers are still continuing to buy very regularly and every, um, but I really hope for a younger demographic and for the people for a lot of the people who would be listening to this talk 14 to 18 year olds I believe that pitch probably would affect them more and I really hope that that doesn't put off reading because I think it's um it's really fundamental that we do we do protect um our younger like the younger readerships and also people people who are families that are buying books um so that they continue to buy books and it doesn't become elite and that so that's one of um the changes that i'm very concerned about in the industry and, um, as at present um the covid had a lot of effects at, um like um on book selling um so one of the changes that happened um was obviously the falling off where event and event, um, like a lively events program was very critical to most um to most bricks and mortar booksellers um Obviously, there couldn't be any like um, like live events um, where there is in some experiences there's been a complete drop off of the online event. Now, there have been some bookshops that have taken a really a really great approach in terms of accessibility of having hybrid events, um, and I think that's a really really like very positive pro, um, like progress in terms of making sure that events are accessible to all uh, for people who have accessibility issues of getting into a bookshop and also distance from bookshop as well even though they really care about the author. 
Zane, um, if we can come to you, I think, you know, if you can talk a little bit about how you've seen um, uh, the book industry change um, over the past few years. Yeah, uh, over the past few years, it's changed quite a lot, actually, I think in particular from the pandemic um, with, with there is a shift to online purchasing. And uh, that's just a different way of selling books. And it's a different way of talking to customers. You really have to, um, you know, you, yeah, you have less of that in-store feeling and uh, time really to, to, to dwell into what you are trying to sell. And um, I think also from that, um, some of the Daphne's touched on, which is, is social media, and actually you're getting a lot of books that are coming out through various different pockets and bits of energy that are coming from customers and people who are online who are just talking about them as opposed to the booksellers just pr promoting and presenting what they like, which is really, really exciting. Um, at its core, I'd still say bookselling is pretty much the, the same game it, it's always been in the sense that it is dependent on the markets and the types of books that you have. But what's really exciting is within that is that you get different trends and you get different genres that come and pop up. So clearly at the moment, I think, um, if we're going to look at the last couple of years, we're actually really riding a wave with uh, genres such as manga. The manga market has absolutely ballooned. Um, and I think most bookshops have had to really change their layouts and their spacing to sort of match that as is just to have streams of customers coming in and buying manga books which is so exciting and you wouldn't have thought that um maybe 10 years ago so i suppose this is the the, the sort of follow-on question from you know how we've seen it change is do we have any predictions for the future where we see um the book industry moving uh towards so daphne would you would you like to start Oh, this is a really hard <laughs> one, you know, uh, I think it's, um, I think it's definitely changing as Mira mentioned, you know, there is definitely uh, more diverse books being written, um, hopefully will continue because I think there should be uh, different voices uh, being kind of heard, different stories that are being told. And I think um, I'm hoping um, that will continue um, just not not as a trend but just just going forward that's just how it should be um yeah and yeah so that 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 um that is what i'm hoping will shift the most in in the book industry thank you daphne and mira um i mean seconding it off um like what daphne said very much that i do hope i do hope that, um like there are um there there's actually um like an they're much more diverse like diverse stories told but not just trauma-based stories so that there is um there is actually a lot of joy and joy in people's experiences we get we get asked a lot like but aren't there um like because if you want to read happy queer stories invariably you have you read ya and we would like to see that sort of branch off a lot more into adults than um, than exists presently, um, where a lot of queer stories tend to be very trauma based. But in terms of other projections, I think that there'll also be, in terms of formatting, I think there'll be a drop off of certain hardbacks, and books will go straight into paperback. Um, and I think some publishers are making that decision as well. Um, I also, I, we've really seen an increase in demographics of reading that weren't um weren't just traditionally well represented in books and i um and i'm talking about also age demographics in that case so 20 a real rise in 20 to 30 um 30 year olds um 20 to 35 year olds reading and i think there'll be a lot more complex um like literature and more nuanced stories from from the from that generation as well so that, I, I agree. I think diversity is probably the key word, greater diversity in various different ways. That is both in terms of what is being published and who's reading it. Um, I also think that actually we will see from a from a bookshop perspective in the book industry, we'll see a bit more of a return to the high street, I hope. And I'm hoping that there will be, um, you know, the dusting off after the last couple of years, more bookshops opening, more events happening and, and a much more re reinvigorated community behind that. Thank you. I've got one last very important question, um, which is what sort of skills do you look for when hiring um, new members of staff? We look for people who, um, who are pretty confident, 
um, who love books. That's absolutely critical. You have to be a reader. Um, preferably um, that you have to be able to do administrative tasks um, because um, as we're a bricks and mortar bookshop, there are, you have to be able to learn to use our systems. Um, one thing I seem to be failing at is hiring people who are really good at social media. Somehow, even though they're all younger than me, I really, we really, really do need um, like um, people who have it because it's it's quite time consuming, like doing things within the book industry, and because it's not, um, it's just like it is a little bit more considered than um, than if you are good at social media generally. And um, and so I think that's the challenge. Sometimes is the transferring of their skills into into some into a format where there are considered elements to it. Um, we also because there's quite a lot of um, loan working in the shop. You need to be quite sensible and be able to um, to be able to handle particular situations. Really good at customer facing in our case because we are quite small and you end up talking to everybody who walks through the door and everybody who walks through the door in our case wants a conversation with us as well. Um, so it's just like just talk um, talk and love books and be able to use a computer. <laughs> Uh, definitely uh, mirroring a bit of what Mira said uh, definitely a passion for books is the first thing that we look for you know um, just demonstrating how much you love uh, reading you know uh, is, is so key uh, into working in, in the books industry um, we we always look for team players um, you know people that can work well as a, in a team uh, because so much of what we do is project-based um, and so much we do um is, you know, interacting with other people in the business, you know, it, nothing is ever done in silo. Uh, and so you have to uh, know how to work with others very well, I, I think, um, and make, you know, decisions as a group or, you know, contribute, you know, your opinions um, in, in, I guess, like a respectful and, you know, productive way. Yeah, I mean, everything else, honestly, is, is really a bonus, you know, you don't, I don't think you need any specific, I, I don't, I certainly don't hire anyone with any uh, particular background or experience, uh, as long as they, you know, have, have the passion, um, have that ability to demonstrate themselves, um, and have, you know, the kind of I guess just like a good work ethic, then that's sort of what I'm looking for. Thank you. And finally to you, Zane. Um, I'd agree. I think number one is is absolutely um, is absolutely passion for books, and and also I think the confidence to talk about that passion and to be able to demonstrate it. Um, the the other things that I would say is is probably the ability to communicate well. Because I think that's the two-way relationship, really, which is that we want them to be able to communicate well to us to impart their expertise and then also for us to communicate well to the new employees so that we can sort of work together better in the future. Thank you. So thank you all so much. Um, that's all we've got time for today. A huge thanks to all our brilliant panellists for giving such great insight into um, the book industry. Um, if you would like to know more about careers in the book industry, make sure that you check out more of the Open Books online events and videos on the website. Um, so you can access it at publishers.org.uk forward slash open books or search for hashtag open books. So thank you so much again.